All right. Well, in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at the camera morph tag. Quite possibly the easiest way to create an animated camera. There's lots of good things about it. There's some bad things. We'll talk about all of it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So let's explain the setup here. And um, in order to create an animated camera, the camera morph tag needs still cameras. So what I've done is in the same scene that I used to talk about the new um, standard camera, Redshift standard camera. Um, feel free to watch that if you want more information about it. But what I've done is just created some still images. So, you know, maybe this scene started off as some stills, and now I've decided to create a camera animation from these stills. What we want to do is create an additional camera here, which is what I've done. And what we want to do is right click on it, go to camera tags and choose the camera morph tag. Okay, now, um, two different modes here we can work with. Simple morph, where you can use two cameras and then just blend between them and animate that one property. Or you can use the multi-morph, which allows you to work with more than two cameras. And so all I need to do is take my three cameras, drag them in here in the correct order. And from there, I can then just animate this one blend property. So I don't have to keyframe all of my position properties, all of my rotation properties at multiple frames. Instead, it's just this one property that I need to animate. Now, that's not to say there aren't some issues with it, okay? Looking at our cameras here, um, we can see the motion path. And one of the downsides of the camera morph is that we have a limited control over this motion path. Um, really, it comes down to working with our different interpolations here. So we could go from soft one to soft two, Notice how that kind of rounds things out a bit more. Um, we could even go linear, but really that is it, okay? We can't open up our timeline, go into F-curve mode and adjust the motion path like we could with a um, traditionally keyframed camera, okay? We can also work with this blend property a little bit more. If you twirl it down, you will see a curve where we could adjust, say, the timing here of this, but it's not gonna allow us to really refine the motion path, okay? One thing about this blend percent is that it's uh, the numbers here uh, are based on the number of cameras and the math can get a bit weird. So for instance, three cameras here, 0% is going to be camera one, 50% will be camera two, and 100% will be camera three. Now where this gets trickier is if you add more cameras. So a fourth camera would be zero, 33.33, uh, and then 66.66, and then 100% for the fourth. So um, like I said, the math can get a bit tricky there. Also important is the morph tracks section, since that is really um, what we can use to determine what properties are going to get morphed between these different cameras here. And some of these can be extremely important if we're using Redshift and say working with depth of field and motion blur. So that's where focus distance comes in handy. It's where f-stop um, needs to be turned on if you're planning on using depth of field on all of these cameras. If you're using ISO or gain to brighten things up a little bit, you would want to check that on. If you're using motion blur, you have motion blur turned on. In Redshift, you want to make sure shutter is turned on. Now, that isn't to say all of the properties are here, okay? Um, any of the color correction stuff won't work. Same with lens effects. So it's not a perfect solution here. And that's where maybe the stage is a little bit better option, though the stage has its own issues, okay? But at least when it comes to motion blur and depth of field, from my testing, those have worked. Though um, keep in mind, it is pretty new. So who knows if it works 100%. Um, I know there were some previous issues um, with using the Redshift camera in takes. So um, I still think they're getting this incorporated and it's possible some of these properties don't work um, as well as they could or should. Okay, but that's the basics of working with our camera morph. All right, now I have another way of working with the camera morph, and that is actually with animated cameras. And I use this as a replacement for the stage object, especially when it comes to um, doing preview animations. Now, this will really only work if your cameras um, if the keyframes don't overlap. So for instance, camera one is zero to 100, camera two is 100 to 200, and camera three is 200 to 300. So if you have a lot of overlap, um, this isn't really going to work. So once again, I've already created this camera, and what I can do is come here to camera tags, add camera morph again, back to the tag section, we are gonna use the multi-morph, 
and once again, drag in our three cameras, okay? And then what I can do with this blend is keyframe it, all right? But I'm gonna keyframe it very much, um, very simply, okay? So at zero, I will keyframe the blend at 0%. At 100, I will keyframe it at 50%, okay? And I can even type this in, okay? And at 200, I will keyframe this at 100%, okay? And the last thing I need to do here, because if you notice, it's still gonna be animated, all right, or trying to switch between camera one and camera two, um, is come into our timeline, find that camera morph, right, that I just animated here in the blend, and I'm gonna switch it to step interpolation. If you've never seen what step interpolation looks like before, well, it looks like steps. And so now what we're gonna see is that it's going to hold and use camera one between zero and 100. 100 to 200, it will use camera two. And then between 200 and 300, it will use camera three. Okay, and so if we hit play, that's what we'll see. All right, notice how it's very different here. And this is just a great way to string together a couple of cameras um, to make sure the movement matches, the speeds match, and kick out a preview animation to send off to say a client or, or whoever needs to review this. Um, and I really think it's great because, you know, before I even render, I can get a sense if the motion here matches, if the speed matches, all of that stuff, okay? So really, really useful and powerful. Um, I did forget to mention one other advantage of um, working with uh, the uh, camera morph tag here, and that is, should I, well, I'll just add it back in um, and reset this up, that you can change your camera views at any point in time. And so, um, you know, if I had blended this between, um, make sure we're looking through the correct camera now, zero to 100, okay? And, you know, so we have this animation between our three different camera views, and I send this off to my art director, my boss, my freelance client, whoever I'm trying to get approval from, and they go, well, it'd be great, you know, we really like this, but uh, the this last frame is a bit too high, you know, let's center the, the vases more. Well, it's really as simple as looking through camera three and changing it, okay? And then when you come back here, you can see it's updated. So that animation has changed. And you can even change it and you know see that from the top view. I can come in here and adjust camera one, okay? We're not seeing it, but if I adjust camera one, um, it will eventually update the curve there, all right? It may take, an, take a second to do it, um, but it will. So something to keep in mind there, right? Can see it now, it's updated. Uh, that you can update the motion paths, you can update these camera positions um, at any point, so you're not locked in, okay? Now, all of, all of this is to say that um, there are definitely some places for the camera morph tag, but in reality, a keyframed camera is still going to be better. So for instance, this camera here, um, I've animated between cameras two and cameras three, okay? And the advantage here is I can come in to this keyframed camera in F-curve mode, and I could work with my rotation properties a little bit, in this case, the heading rotation, okay? And, you know, I'm not sure how good this is gonna look, but we could maybe get rid of that slow in there, all right, and see how that affects our camera movement, all right? Not too bad, but what that means is we're gonna be rotating differently, and you can see how I'm able to change kind of the focus here, so if I wanted this to, you know, be, looking out at the vases or the skyline sooner, well, then I can do that by adjusting um, the curve in here, all right? Same thing um, here. If I wanted to um, work with, I guess that's it for rotation, but some of the positions, I can very easily come in and adjust that. Though positions aren't really the, the best um, example here. It's really rotation. In this case, it's really the timing. And you can just see how, um, we're able to uh, really kind of change all of this stuff on the fly, rotation-wise, where that's just not something we can do here. Um, same with the motion path for our animated um, camera. You can see right now it's a straight line, um, but that is also easy to fix by coming in here 
and as you work with your handles, you can see you're able to curve it out. So if I come up a little bit here, you can see we're curving this a little bit. And while I doubt that's the exact motion I would want, hopefully you get the idea that there we go, there it is, that we're able to curve that out um, and have more control over it with these individual keyframes um, when we're working in our timeline than working with our camera morph. But if we're trying to just create something very quickly, the camera morph is definitely um, a very useful technique. So that will do it for this video. Hopefully you liked it. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know and take care.